I'd like to know who said the cornerstone of democracy is a free press. I uh, think it was Thomas Jefferson. Well, he never read the L.A. Chronicle. Don't get me wrong, I happen to believe in freedom of the press. It's Mike Pierce I can't stand. Mm, the syndicated columnist. I suppose you're a fan of his. I didn't say that. Did you read his column this morning? About the role of the second sex in combat? Who even calls women the second sex anymore? Do you know how many women participated in Operation Desert Storm? If you feel that strongly about it, why not write a letter to the editor? What good would it do? You know what scares me? If Mike Pierce thinks that when you put men and women together in a trench, you get rabbits, what do you think the average guy on the street thinks? What does Jesse Helms think? Personally, I don't think we've come a long way, baby. The other day in my office, one of the PDs paid me this huge compliment. He told me I was a very good attorney for a woman. <laughs> Why is it when, when a man is good at something, he's just good at it? But when a woman's good, well, she's good for a woman. And while we're on the subject, how come when people talk about a man and his work, they never comment as to whether he's a good father or husband? I mean, that's important, isn't it? it certainly seems to be important if you're a woman. We can never be just a good doctor, or a good accountant, or a good fireman, excuse me, a fire person. We have to be a good wife and mother, too, and daughter, and friend. And heaven help us if we've got the rocks to stick up for ourselves, because then we're also a... Well, you know what I mean. Yeah, we've come a long way. Because every time we take two steps forward, they push us one step back. Makes me tired thinking about it. You're right, I am going to write a letter to the editor, and I'm going to tell him what I think. A very good letter. For a woman. Almost funny. our mother-bound souls, the warrior, the king, and especially the wild man. <laughs> what wild man? Here, take my copy of Iron John. Robert Bly, you kidding me? Hank, it is the most honest thing I've read since Soul on Ice. The men's movement. What makes you think you need a men's movement? You already got all the good jobs. You want the bad jobs now, too? Hi. That lazy bum didn't check out my client's alibi until it was too late. Which lazy bum? Six weeks ago, I told Kovach that my client, Abernathy, swore that he was at our hideaway on Ventura Boulevard at the time of the shooting. I told Kovach to check it out. He waited too damn long, Rosie. 
It was a bring-your-own-linens motel, if you know what I mean. They liquidate the registration cards every 60 days. What am I supposed to tell my client? What am I supposed to tell Judge Feldman? You're the one who's always looking for witnesses as you're trailing for trial and handing off your cases. What do you usually do? What, are you and Kovach sleeping together? What do you want me to say, Mason? You brought him into the office. He's your responsibility. For crying out loud, Mason, I recommended the man for the job. I'm not his mother or his lover. So take it out with Ben. I'm late for court. I'm telling you, Rosie, I am not taking the fall for your guy's incompetence. See, I wouldn't have to steal food if our federal funding hasn't been cut. Your Honor, this appears to be Mr. Bonner's first cut. arrest. However, this Your is a strong to case. Your bail, the officers caught him right in the act. He claims to have a stable address, but it's a shelter. Of which he happens to be the director. Ms. O'Neill. Well, the people are asking $5,000 bail. Do you let them post the bail? Mr. Bonner stole the chickens off the truck in view of a hundred more people. Suffering, His motivation, however well-intended, is irrelevant. Quiet. Quiet. One more outburst, and I will clear this courtroom. Thank you. Your Honor, it is our position, though we are sympathetic to the plight of the homeless and Mr. Bonner's good works on Skid Row, that Mr. Bonner's actions should not be condoned. Thank you. Ms. O'Neill? Yes, Your Honor. My client was arrested after allegedly appropriating frozen chickens from the back of a delivery truck that had broken down outside the Brush Hill Mission and handing them out to the homeless. He is not accused of profiting from this action. What he is accused of doing is what he does every day, providing light and hope to people who feel that life is hardly worth living. Because that's what those chickens represent. Life and hope, albeit frozen. <laughs> Your Honor, these people are present in this courtroom today to show their support for Mr. Bonner and to post his bail. Mr. Bonner, however, is adamant that any money raised on his behalf should go to the shelter and not to him personally. Therefore, I request that the court release Mr. Bonner on his own recognizance. Your Honor. Ms. Ramey, please. I'm still listening, Ms. O'Neill. Thank you, Your Honor. My client is not a flight risk, and I'm confident that he will appear for subsequent court proceedings. However, we would not object to the court imposing certain conditions to the granting of an OR release that would restrict Mr. Bonner from travel outside the shelter and require him to continue with his present employment. Well, it's quite a compelling argument, Counselor. Yeah. I think your client's a chicken thief. You think he's Robin Hood. Okay, now what? You know, in some countries where the law still means something, when you steal a chicken, they cut off your finger. Two chickens, two fingers. Three chickens. They also three... cut out forked tongues. Oh, really? I need a list of possible character witnesses for Bonner. Oh, that's easy. I'll just start taking names. Their witnesses, the character part's debatable. That's the address of the shelter. Thank you. I bet you're going to tell me the society owes these suckers three meals a day and a roof over there. Come on. Yes, but then again, I'm not a member of the Walter Kovach 1000 Points of Light Club. You work for a living, I work for a living. What makes them so special? They don't have to work. Oh, excuse me. How many jobs were you offered after you got off the police force? I wasn't looking. I was waiting for a left-wing knee-jerk do-gooder to blackmail me into the career opportunity of a lifetime. While we're on the subject of your employment, what the hell is going on with you and Mason Pappas? <sighs> what? What? around here is just plain Crosby. Uh-huh. Walter Kovach, public defender's office. I've been expecting you. Ms. O'Neill sent me to get some information. 
Hello. Hello. Kovacs. Kovacs. That's a Hungarian name, isn't it? Yeah. You know, uh, my great-grandmother was born in Budapest. You don't say. Mm. What I need are the names of friends, supporters, political types, uh, who will attest to the fact that you're a pillar of the community. Yeah, well, I jotted a few down. Also, there's some copies of some letters, uh, tributes of sort, you know, to the work that I've been doing here at the shelter for the last 10 years. The one in the frame is from Nancy Reagan. Let's start. How many people do you feed here? 1,800 a day. On Thanksgiving, we've served as many as 10,000 meals. That's a lot of turkey. Can I get you something? You know, coffee, lunch. I ain't on the way. Look, this is a great cook. He used to work in one of those hip joints on Melrose. I'll be in touch if I need anything else. Cop written all over him. He nuked one of Rosie's cases last week. Now he's making ways for me. Yeah, so why is Kovach still here? Innocent until proven guilty. Or does that apply only to our client? Come on, Rosie. We all know you got a vested interest in this guy. <laughs> we don't know why. He's the best investigator we've got. <sighs> Sorry, George. Well, when you're right, you're right. Uh, you know, I've worked for Mason before, and uh, he's usually not as prepared as the rest of you guys. I gotta get to work. I hate to interrupt office gossip, but you got a visitor. Who is it? A man. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Carol. I'm Rosie O'Neill. I understand you're looking for me. Mike Pierce, LA Chronicle. You don't look like your picture. My mother says the same thing. You were younger. So was my mother. What can I do for you? I detect some hostility here? No. You read my column? I used to. I read your letter to my editor. You know, I took a lot of heat for that women in combat piece, especially from professional women. Oh, so you're here to apologize? Uh, no. No. Uh, I'm here to confirm the facts on the Crosby Bonner case. I interviewed him yesterday. You gotta be kidding. I asked, he answered. You don't want me to talk to your client? Get a gag order. You bet I'll get a gag order. You're not going to jeopardize my case. Hey, wait. Why don't you look on the bright side of things? After I interview him, Bonner won't be just some guy running a homeless shelter. He'll be a celebrity. Oh, that'll go over real big in county jail. Why don't you come in and say hello to the boy? I'm not big on reunions. Not everybody wanted you out of there. Some of us miss having you around. Excuse me while I puke. What did you want with the Larry Rostin file? What's Just up? checking something out. Last I heard, he was still running. Yeah. This all you got? Yeah. What'd you expect from those old notes? You never wrote anything down. Could I borrow this for a couple of days? My butt's already on the line, pal. Oh, hey. Is that Frank Richland? No, Richland never had that much hair. I'm supposed to be looking the other way, right? Right. You let me know if anything turns up? Yeah, yeah. Come to dinner next week. And bring that page with you. I gotta put the file back. Louise would love to see you. I understand that you and Mr. Pappas have been having your differences. Call it what you like. That guy's a disgrace. 
even to the Office of Public Defender. Well, you always did have a knack for calling them as you see them, Kovacs. Right or wrong. At least I've got the guts to call them. <laughs> Kovacs, if you have a need to make this personal, go right ahead. It already is. Or Pappas would be in here with me. Well, I'm talking to you first. Age before beauty. Please. Mm. I'm here to listen, Kovacs, to both sides of the story. So, please, enlighten me. 20 grand for his wife's new station wagon. 45,000 for the remodel on the house. Two months behind on the mortgage. Mason Pappas doesn't know if he's coming or going. All he can think about is how he's going to pay next month's bills. So, the cases become an inconvenience. Details are forgotten. And the guy doesn't even tell me about Abernathy's alibi until the day before the trial. Are you with me so far? What portion of your total income did you give to charity last year? Oh, I don't know. I didn't add it up. Well, your accountant must have, you know, for your income tax returns. Right. Well, was it 1%, 5%, 10%? It wasn't 10%. I don't even think it was 5%. Everybody should learn to be more charitable. Well, Mr. Hare, my civics teacher, he's so amazing. He says that if everybody contributed just 2% of their annual income to worthwhile causes, we could solve the world's problems like that. Oh, sorry. 2%? <laughs> yeah. And he also said that during the Gulf War, you know, when all the scud attacks were going on, that President Bush should have gotten on television and asked every American to send him $1,000. And you know what? That right there would have cured the budget deficit. Really? Yeah, I mean, the President had his chance and he blew it. Would you have sent in a thousand dollars? Yeah. If someone would lend me the money. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I'll see who it is. Hey. Hey, yourself. <laughs> is it past your bedtime? No way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, where's your evil stepmother? Rosie, it's for you. What a surprise. I had to talk to you. I couldn't wait. I'll finish the dishes. What's this? This is a handwritten list of character witnesses your client gave me this afternoon. And what's this? This is a formula for LSD. Oh. Well, that's sweet of you, Kovacs. Why am I looking at it? See anything similar about the two of them? Well, they could be written by the same person, but what do I know? I'm not going to like this, am I? This formula was written by your client, Crosby Bonner, a.k.a. Larry Rostam, 23 years ago. It's a formula for lysergic acid diethylamide LSD. He manufactured it in the school's chemistry lab and sold it to his classmates. I busted him. He skipped bail. I sell a warrant out for him from 1968. Are you sure about this? Positive. Your solid citizen is nothing but a low-life drug peddler who changed his name. My zipper's stuck. Can you help me? Sure. Thanks. Have you seen the morning paper? Oh, yeah, it's in my book bag. See, I'm studying the stock market for Mr. Hare's class. The psychology of money, you know, it makes people invest. Except to follow the New York Stock Exchange Index for the next week. Do you mind if I keep the business section? Not if you got a hot tip for me. Mm, biotechnical stocks. Mr. Harris says the companies are socially responsible and recession-proof. Well, I'll call my broker. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. I'd like to meet this Mr. Hare. I've never seen you this excited about school before. Oh, well, school's still pretty jacky. But, uh, civics. Rosie, it has changed my life inexorably. Inexorably? Yeah. Oh, look, that's Nina. I gotta go. Bye. Wait a minute. Your business section. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. See you later. Damn you, Kovach. I won't work with the man, Ben. Me neither. It's All right, listen, I understand everybody's displeasure with our Mr. Kovach, but we are professionals here, right? And we are going to take him in our stride. Well, that's pretty hard to do when my last client went to the joint because Kovach didn't do his job. 
I sent him a memo six weeks before the trial started. Six weeks. Now he fingered one of Rosie's clients. I'm not sure Kovach is the one who told the press. Well, who else could it have been? Kovach used to leak stories to Mike Pierce when he was on the force. How do you know that? Why do you always insist on defending the man? Yeah, I say we should fire him. I mean, who needs a trouble, right? Look, if the purpose of this meeting is to bring Walter Kovach to trial, don't you think we should at least give him a chance to justify his actions? What justification is there for leaking a story to the press? What happened to the presumption of innocence? I agree with Rosie. And for what it's worth, I've always found the man to be very thorough and diligent. So what are you saying, Udell? Are you calling me a liar? No, I'm just trying to overcome the cultural taboos placed on men revealing their feelings. Oh, Udell, go beat your men's movement drum somewhere else. It won't work, Ben. He still thinks he's a cop. He's not on our side. And we just keep giving him more and more rope to hang himself with, and us. I'll quit before I work with Kovach again. Look, he can work on my cases. You sure about that? Yes. Okay. Okay. You Dell? I don't think so, Ben. You Dell? I know he's the best investigator in the office, but I don't relish him doing to me what he did to you and Mason. Allegedly did. I'm sorry, Rosie. All right, well, Mr. Kovach's actions seem to be at the very least problematic. Now, I still don't know what's going on here, but I am looking into it. In the meantime, Mr. Kovach is on suspension. Kovach! Where you been? I've been looking for you all day. Ah. Have you seen this morning's paper? Yeah. Sports section. How about them Rams? Opinion section, page four. We made Mike Pierce's column. Congratulations. Can I keep this for my scrapbook? How did it happen? How should I know? Are you telling me you didn't have anything to do with it? Are you telling me I did? Yes or no? I've already been tried and convicted by a jury of my betters. It doesn't matter what I say. Look, Kovach, Ben is ready to suspend you. Now, if you didn't leak the story, who did? Tell Ben he doesn't have to suspend me. I quit. Well, let us know where to send your last check. Who let you in here? You have something against the press, O'Neill. Not a thing. My client was just tried and convicted of a 23-year-old crime in your column this morning. I thought it might be nice if I could look into it before you sentenced him. Let's not go off the deep end. So Crosby synthesized some LSD in 68. I myself am an acid valedictorian. It was a crime at the Times. It's still a crime, Mr. Pierce. And now my client is looking at up to seven years and a fine of $50,000. Where'd you get your story? Have you ever heard of the shield ball? Freedom of the press? I don't believe this. Have dinner with me tonight. Oh, I can't. I'm booked. Through the end of the century. I'll take that as a maybe. So some ex-cop wants to get back in the game and you're buying it? <laughs> Things must get pretty desperate around the public defender's office. Are you denying your Larry Rothman? Why did you send Walter Kovach to see me? He was the investigator assigned to your case. Look, I am very sorry about all of this, but I'm not sure it has anything to do with Mr. Kovach. I skipped bail 23 years ago. This guy is still trying to bring me in. Your activism, marches, sit-ins, hunger strikes. It's an embarrassment to a lot of politicians. One well-placed anonymous tip, and you're out of their hair. Now, one of my other investigators is following up on all the possibilities. <laughs> well, so now I get another investigator. Good. Very, very good. I want a new lawyer, too. I'll make that request to the court. You know, you could have been up front with me, Crosby. If you had been, you might not be sitting here now. What I am is what you see. Well and you won't mind providing the court with a copy of your birth certificate. Look, Miss O'Neill, I have been Crosby Bonner for so long, I don't even know who Larry Rostin is. I mean, 23 years and not so much as a double take. A man stops worrying. Who is Crosby Bonner, really? Just some homeless guy who died too young. 
So you took his identity and went underground? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the Cliff Notes version. To Canada? Yeah. You know, around Calgary, Lake Louise. Beautiful country up there. I homesteaded for a while, but I missed the traffic. So I took a chance. I came back. I'm making my contribution to society. I'm giving something back. I'm dedicated to helping the homeless of this city, which is a hell of a lot more than I can say for most of my countrymen. So, what is my crime? By what standard am I being judged? I've wiped my slate clean. I have rehabilitated myself. So you tell me, what is the big freaking deal? You tell me. Rosie, wait up. If it's not good news, I don't want to hear it. Still haven't heard from Kovach, huh? Nope. Well, it's only been three days. Besides, he's not exactly your hat and hand kind of guy. Well, neither am I. So what do you have for me? Oh, witness statements in the Bonner case. Thanks. I thought he asked for a new attorney. The judge was reluctant to appoint one. Mm -hmm. By the way, thank you for pitch hitting. Sure. You know that confidential matter you asked me to look into? I think I know who uh, busted Dr. Psychedelic's bubble. Rosie, can I talk to you? Sure. It's about Kovach and Mason. I have some information, but I'm not sure whether I should say anything. Maybe you should talk to Ben about it. I'd rather talk to you. Okay. Mason asked me to type up an investigative report for him last week. Now, I don't normally pay much attention, but when I went to go copy it, I noticed that the date had been changed. Backdated six weeks. Rosie, it was the Abernathy case. I'm glad you told me. I know I should have said something before. Mr. Kovach is already gone. No, 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 it's all right. Thank you. I'm glad you told me. It's okay. Barbara. It's okay. Have a nice weekend. Ben had a meeting with his son's guidance counselor. He should be here soon. I'll tell him you want to see him. Thanks, Carol. Coffee, meat. Mason, what can I do for you? I don't know what Kovach has been saying, but the uh, boss is really on my back. Hey, you got to talk to Ben for me, Rosie. Tell him I'm pulling my weight. The way I see it, we were both shafted by the guy, so that makes us allies, right? Not necessarily. Come on, Rosie. Kovach backed me into a corner. Hey, look, it's your word against his, and I'll take yours. Well, surely then there must be an investigation request on file. Yeah, I filed the six weeks before the trial started. Did you ask Kovach to verify Abernathy's alibi? I got nine years with the PD's office. 3,000 plus defendants. I won three death penalty cases. Did you ask Kovach to verify Abernathy's alibi? The man is out to discredit me. I filed it six weeks ago. Barbara said that she made a copy of it for you last Friday. If you filed it six weeks ago, then why was it backdated? Help me out here, Hank. Maybe you should answer Rosie's question first. You know Kathy and my kids. I've had you guys to the house for dinner. I'm staring at bankruptcy. I need this job. You know you get a ticket for speeding. You have a phone call. It's a reporter guy. Mr. Pierce. No, we have nothing to talk about. 
Well, this better be on the level. I thought we were here to discuss Crosby Bonner. You always move this fast, don't you? You're very irritating. I'm from New York. Graduated from CCNY. Spent 20 years with the Sun-Times. Congressional White House correspondent, Athens Bureau Chief, London Bureau Chief. I personally believe that the press is deeply involved in making public policy. My schedule is much too hectic for any kind of social life. But I gotta tell you, I can make an exception in your case. Oh, you don't have to, really. You do have a great pair of legs. That was one of the first things I noticed about you. You wanna know the first? Here's a copy of my new article on Bonner. My editor will print that. You just say when. What makes you think your article can help the defense? Two Pulitzers. Paragraph three and four. Bonner wasn't the only guy selling LSD out of that chem lab. There were four other chemistry students, just like your client. And they let him take the fall? Oh, they feel very bad about it now, but that's off the record. Do you know that one of them went on to win a Nobel Prize for molecular biology? Lowest achiever in the group. Tenured professor at Ivy League College. While this is all very interesting, it does not mitigate against the criminal acts that my client committed. Well, Bonner shouldn't be judged by what happened in the past. Right, but unfortunately the law doesn't look at it that way. How is a community served by going against a man who's no longer a threat to society? You're right. I've got season tickets to the forum. Go to a hockey game with me. No. Then I won't print it. Fine. Fine, okay. Well, now that we have business taken care of, why don't we order a couple of drinks and I'll give you the basics. Two scotch rocks. Do you like scotch? Mineral water. So you just don't like hockey or is it every sport? Now, I finally decided what I'm going to do with my life. I'm going to be a socially responsible entrepreneur. What? Nothing. I think it's great. It's great you know what you want to do with your life. Congratulations. Thank you. So what made you decide on being an entrepreneur? <laughs> Mr. Hare. <laughs> when am I going to meet this Mr. Hare? Well, you're going to be really disappointed. I mean, he's not that good looking. I mean, he's cute, but you probably wouldn't give him a second look unless you talk to him first. You know the type? Yeah. But he really gives you a sense of how the world can really work. I mean, did you know that when the Russian people manned the barricade outside Parliament in Moscow, that McDonald's and Kentucky Fried Chicken delivered food free of charge just so they could keep up their strength? I mean, it's too cool for words. Junk food drove the nail in the coffin of communism. Mr. Hare? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Rosie. Isn't that Mr. Kovach? What's he doing here? He quit his job at the public defender's office. Kimmer, I, there are a pair of shoes that I wanted to buy back there, and I forgot, and, and it's back in this direction. Hey, it looks really terrible in that suit. Yeah, come on. What? What was he? I don't want him to see us. Why? Because it would embarrass him. Rosie, did you ever stop to think that maybe you're the one who's embarrassed? Some privacy. I was in the neighborhood. You're sitting on my closet. I'll let you slip the guy at the desk. Alexander Hamilton. I told him I was your ex wife. Family discount. I wanted to apologize. Fine. Beat it. 
You and your ex-partner arrested Larry Roston, a.k.a. Crosby Bonner, 23 years ago. You inadvertently tipped off Detective Hill when you asked for that file. He leaked the story to Mike Pierce because he was looking for a little pre-retirement glory. Well, aren't you going to say anything? You're not telling me anything I don't already know. I was wrong about you. I'm sorry. Apology not accepted. You're too much. No, you're too much. You're the one I wanted to make nice, be co-workers, friends. I usually don't buy into that crap, but this time I thought I'd make an exception in your case. First little bump in the road, you're out the door. That's not true. You thought I ran it on your client. I asked you, Kovach. I told you what happened. Why didn't you defend yourself? You'd already tried and convicted me. Well, don't tell me you never fed leads to Mike Pierce when it suited you as a cop. You don't have much faith in me, do you? Look, I, I didn't think, and I jumped to the wrong conclusions. Accept the apology, Kovach. You took Mason's word over mine. I would have believed you. I would have defended you. I'm truly sorry. There's a door. I'm not leaving here until we work this out. I don't work things out, Counselor. If it's broken, leave it broken. You want to play Freud, call your shrink. But stay the hell out of my head. Because I don't need it, and I sure as hell don't need you. everybody's staring at. I'm the first one to ever blow a case. I didn't expect Kovach to understand. But you guys... Hey, <laughs> look, no hard feelings. I mean, I've already got offers from several other firms, so... Uh, as soon as I get settled... I'll have my secretary call your secretary. I know this is an uncomfortable situation for everyone. I have spent my life helping people, protecting them against unfair laws, overzealous enforcers, fighting their battles. But I have never lied, and I've never hit below the belt to keep my job. And I will not tolerate anyone who does in this office. Now, some of you may not think that Mr. Kovach is on our side. But this man is honest. I believed what he told me and it checked out. That's why Mr. Pappas is no longer with us. I'm proud to be a public defender. And I am proud of each and every one of you. I think I owe Kovacs an apology. Yeah, I came down pretty hard on him, too. Ditto. You're going to ask him to come back, aren't you? I'm thinking about it. Big mistake. Like, 
I'm sorry if this sounds petty, but I don't think the man's cut out for defense work. He's been vindicated, Hank. A small point in his favor. His personality pushes my buttons. Every man deserves a second chance, even Kovach. And according to Robert Bly, a man should honor his elders. In conclusion, if you saw someone drowning, Your Honor, wouldn't you steal a boat to save their life? The truck broke down. All around Mr. Bonner were hungry people, and he saw a way to feed them. Your Honor, I believe compassion is called for in this case, and I ask for no jail time. Does the defendant have anything to say before I pass sentence? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Bonner would like to make a statement to the court. Your Honor, I can't apologize for taking those chickens. Uh, there was the opportunity, and I took it. The way I see it, I was obeying a higher law. I get frustrated seeing people that I can't help. I can't fill their lives, so I try to fill their bellies. But not everyone ends up on Skid Row because they're hungry. Drugs play a big part in it. 23 years ago, I experimented with LSD. I was a kid. I, I didn't know what drugs could do. I didn't know they could destroy lives. It, well, I sure as hell know it now. And there is not a day that goes by that I'm not sorry for what I did. I can't stop people from taking drugs. But I flatter myself that I can make a difference. I try to give them options. Your Honor, the people that I work with need me. And I honestly believe that I can make a difference. So please, please do not let a foolish mistake that I made 23 years ago destroy what I'm trying to do now. I'm moved by what you say, Mr. Bonner. But if everybody followed what they thought was a higher law, there would be anarchy. Still, in passing sentence, I can't ignore the man you've become. You're not the same person you were back in 1968. You've obviously changed more than your name. It's my obligation to sentence the person who stands before me now. And looking out at the faces of your friends, Mr. Bonner, I believe Miss O'Neill is right. You shouldn't be judged by what happened in the past. Did Mr. Covart say where he was going? said you quit your job. I did. So what are you doing here? Waiting for you. Have a seat. Got you a cup of coffee. It's cold. Tough. You're predictable, but I still don't have you down to a science. I expected you over an hour ago. Oh, you did? Yes, I did. Hey, you got Bonner a package deal. No jail time, three years probation. Congratulations. A guy you arrested is going free and you're congratulating me? I respect someone who stands up and takes responsibility. And who's man enough to say he's got regrets. So why'd you quit your job? Why did Mason quit his? He didn't. Ben fired him. <laughs> I didn't think Meyer had it in him. Mason falsified his investigation request to you on the Abernathy case. Yeah. When he refused to stand up and take responsibility. So the rabbi can the Greek. Good for him. 
He's holding your job open for you. So what? I think he's gonna get me back. Blackmail me? The decision is yours this time. Whatever you decide. It's okay by me. Well, isn't that sweet? Okay. See you around, counselor. If you think I'm gonna let you just throw away your job, you're... It's my decision, remember? Would you at least think about it? I already have. I see at the office tomorrow, 8 o'clock. I got a lead on the Ellsworth case. Meanwhile, I gotta go beat the crap out of my ex-partner.